Today we're going to discuss how to inspect your pumps when you receive them on site. This particular, this is the four inch model. What we're going to discuss here pertains to all the four inch models, landfill and remediation. Uh, this particular model is a TR970 bottom load landfill pump just as the photo shows. Remove the four uh, <coughs> staples that we have in the bottom. There may be some packing tape. This pump, this can be pumped. This pump is enclosed in this box and it's a telescoping box and the bottom comes off. You want to save the box if you can uh, and the packing. The box has been designed to protect the pump during transport. Inside the box you will find beside the pump is a quick start manual. We're going to be following just about everything you see in the quick start manual, also including some inspection procedures to determine or make sure your pump wasn't damaged during shipment. These same procedures can be used to troubleshoot your pump later on if it happens to malfunction. We're going to remove the plastic sheathing. Good idea to save this material also. <coughs> you will see that there is a tag that says remove the packing from the internal portion of the pump. This has to be done or the pump will not work. Going to remove the tag and turn the pump around because I'm right handed. You can use a half inch nut driver or a half inch open wrench, oh, you know, a closed end wrench or an adjustable wrench, but you're only going to need one of them because to get into this pump only requires three bolts to be removed. The dome screen helps in the landfill to get past your upset joints on your HDPE. Back these two longer bolts out, oh, about three eighths of an inch. And if you can hit them with the bottom of your screwdriver, it helps the seals over here to be uh, pushed away. Makes it a little easier on the tricks in disassembling these pumps. Remediation pumps, there is a bot top load only and it's going to only be have two bolts in it because all the fluids come in from the top. And be careful not to lose your check ball, inlet check ball. We're going to pull the body of the pump, the pump body off of the pump, set it to the side, don't drop it. This is the two sets of packing that have to be removed. They're put in here to protect the float, control rod, and all the other valves and mechanisms from damage during shipment. Here again, save them if you can. If you need to return the pump to us, you need to put this back in. Okay, visually inspect your, the internals. This control rod here needs to be straight, not bent in any shape. Um, one of the first checks you can do is bring your float <coughs> all the way up to the upper control rod stop where my finger is and push it with your float and you'll notice that the control arm linkage here will jump to the top of the head. There's magnets in the, in the head and magnets in the linkage here that pull it closed. Bring your float gently down to the bottom stop and then with the, with the <coughs> discharge tube and the control rod parallel to this table or a flat surface, raise the pump up with, the, with this check valve. This is your discharge check valve. Raise it up slowly and you should at about 
10 to 11 o'clock, the weight of the float will pull the magnets apart. That's a good indication that everything up in here in your mechanism is free, free to move. And I'll show that one more time. We moved it up. Let the pump, <coughs> let the float, excuse me, hit the bottom control rod, stop. Raise the pump up just with the discharge check valve slowly. And when we get to the 10 or 11 o'clock, somewhere in that position, as you see, the float pulled the magnets apart. Because this particular pump, we have several fitting kits that are that are actually part of the, the pump but are shipped loose because of, uh, of the selection that you have. I'm going to temporarily put in a quick connect fitting to supply air to the pump to do further testing. With this particular model, you would just use the, the fittings that come with it to match your airlines. This particular fitting I'm putting in here is, is the same fitting that we actually supply with the environmental pumps. So if you get had purchased an environmental pump, it would already be installed. this type of fitting is pushed to connect. We want to make sure that the tube is cut square to the length of the tube. Push it in until it bottoms out. To continue on with the test, we will supply air to it. Air pressure. You can supply up to 125 PSI with this pump. What we're going to do is bring the float up, hit top control stop, slowly push it forward. The magnet force it should be strong enough or is strong enough to open the valve as you can hear. Air would be entering in the pump and just pushing the fluid out. Push the float down to the bottom control rod stop. And should hear no more air entering into the through the, this air valve. This is the air valve seat right here where my finger is right there. We can do it one more time. Air rushes in, push the bottom, pulls it off. So we've checked the air valve.